What is going on guys welcome back into this video we're going to learn how to use a heap in python and thus also how to use a priority queue in python and the difference between those two terms is basically that a priority queue is just an abstract description of what uh, of what this data type or data structure does and a heap is a concrete data structure so something you can implement now today we're not really going to implement the heap from scratch as we have done with the binary tree we're going to use a library in Python called heap queue. So we can just go ahead and say import heap queue. And this allows us to use the heap in Python. But before we do that, I want to cover some theory here, some basic, uh, some basic theory here for those of you who don't know what a priority queue is, or what a heap is. Now a priority queue, as the name already says, is a queue that structures elements or orders elements by priority. So let's say we have, I'm going to use a multi line comment here, let's say we have some tasks t1, has a priority of five and T2 has a priority of four and T3 has a priority of seven. And then maybe um, we can say something like T4 has nine and T5 has two and then T6 has six or something like that. So these are the priorities and we can say now the lower the number, the more important the task is. Now a priority queue is a data structure that gives us um, always the element with uh, the highest priority next or with the, with the best priority. So in this case, the lowest number. So a priority queue would be a data structure that has all these elements. And when I say next or give me the next element, I get this one here. Then I process it. So I take it out of the queue. And when I say next, I get this one here. And when I say next, I get this one here and so on and so forth. And also we want to have something that's quite efficient. So we want to have something that when I add a new element here, let's say T seven. And I say this has the priority one or three or whatever, it is structured in a proper way. So when I say next, I get this. And when I say next, again, I get this one here. So I want to have something where it's efficient to insert elements and to get them out of there. Uh, so basically a priority queue that is also efficient um, when it comes to the functions that it uses. And this is what a heaps allows uh, what a heap allows us to do. Basically, a heap is an implementation of a priority queue, an effective and efficient implementation of a priority queue. And it is a tree data structure. So I'm going to use some drawing tools here, in order to basically uh, explain to you what a heap is. And a heap has actually a very basic property, depending on whether it's a max heap or a min heap, we have a core element or a root element that has a certain value, let's say, for example, four, and the rule is now that every element that comes below that, so we have children here, uh, every element that comes below that has to be either less or greater than it. So in a min heap, if we have a min heap, each element here has to be larger than four. So we have to have, for example, 10 and uh, five. And then each child of those nodes has again to fulfill this property. So in this case, uh, we can have something like uh, 15, it's not the most beautiful drawing here right now, 15 or 11, for example, or we can say, okay, five has uh, six as a child, or also five is possible. So equals also possible. But this is a min heap. So in a min heap, we have the smallest element at the top. This is the basic idea here. This is why it works as a priority queue. So in a min heap, the lower the number, the higher the priority. In this case, we could say, okay, give me the next element. All we need to do here is we need to take this element here, remove it from uh, from the heap, and then we have the smallest element, so the element with the highest priority. Uh, and then we use something called heapify to basically restructure the tree in a way that it fulfills this property again. So then the five would be at the top and so on and so forth. And with a max heap, it's the opposite. So in a max heap, we have an element here like 10, and each element below it has to be less or equal. So something like eight, or also 10 is fine, and so on. So that's the basic idea of a heap. We're not going to implement the heapify and all these things ourselves. We're going to use heap queue for that. Um, but we're going to create a simple list of values. So we're going to say h is equal to and now we're going to use or let's say just data, let's call this data um, is going to have a couple of values here 10, 20, 43, 1, 2, 65, 17, 44, 2, again, maybe 3, 1, whatever. Um, and essentially, 
this is now just some data. This is not a structured data. This is not sorted. We don't have a priority queue here. Now you might say for a priority queue, wouldn't it be enough to just sort this list? So it wouldn't, be, uh, wouldn't it be enough to just say, okay, uh, sort or sort it, like let's print that sorted data. Wouldn't that be enough? I'm not sure if this is a list. There you go. So wouldn't that be enough actually? And yes, for this, if the data stays like that, it would be enough. But the problem is that now if we want to insert a new element, we have to go through the through the list and we have linear runtime complexity and so on. So we don't want to have that we want to have an efficient way of inserting data. And in a heap, we just have to insert it at the end. And then we have to do this heapify operation. And the maximum amount of steps we need is logarithmic. So the runtime complexity in a heap for entering a new element, inserting a new element is actually logarithmic, which is better than linear. If you want to know more about runtime complexity, take a look at my algorithms and data structures course. It's for free on YouTube, I think four hours. Uh, there I cover more theory. And essentially, we have now this data. And in order to turn this data into a heap, what we do is we say uh, heap, or let's say heap data equals heap q, or actually, we don't need to return it, I think we just say heap q heapify data, and then we can print the data, and it's going to be heapified. And essentially, you can see now maybe that you don't really see a structure that you understand. So what, what does it mean? Why do I have one one here and then 17 here and then two two here it doesn't look very structured. Uh, the idea is the following, you have a certain node I, and the first child of I let me just look this up again, in order to not mess this up. But the the first child is at the index. So if you're currently at the index, I your first child is at the index two times i plus one, and your second child is at the index two times i plus two. And your parent node is essentially at i minus one divided by two. So this is the rule. Um, this is not too important. So let's just focus on the children. In this case, here, we have index zero. So the first child of index zero, we can actually use uh, some plotting here. So we have one here being the root node. So this here, and then the first child is two times zero plus one. So this year, so the first child is one, and then the second child is this year because we have again zero plus two. And then for those, what we have to do is we have to go to one. And we take one times two, so we have two now, plus one. So this is the first child, this is the second child. Um, essentially, you can just keep going like that we have two, two, um, then we have here 65 and so on and so forth, you basically just follow the instructions here, then you have a three here and so on. Um, but this is how it works. So we have always the first child at this index and the second child at this index, if the current index that you're looking at is this. And this is how the heap is structured now. So this is a priority queue now, because if I want to get the next element, I can just pop the element. So I can just go ahead and say print heap queue dot heap pop and I can say data, and then I get the element with the uh, highest priority. So with the lowest value, in this case, one, this is a min heap by default. Um, and you can also see that if I do this, um, and I print data afterwards, this is still going to have the proper tree structure. So it's not just taking uh, taking the first element and then leaving the rest as it was, you can see now that the two comes before the 17, even though this was not the case here. So it's also heapified already. It's the same thing as just going ahead, like, like, let me do that here real quick. Let's say we have a copy and the copy is essentially the data the list here, basically, it's heapified already. And what we're going to do now is we're going to heap pop for the data, but we're going to just pop for the copy. So copy dot pop zero, so pop the first element, we get the same element. So we can pop the same element. But the problem is that if I now go ahead and say print data and print copy, you're going to see that the data is heapified and the copy is not. So in order to to heapify the copy, I would have to call heapify again, whereas heap pop pops and heapifies. So heap q dot heapify copy, then we would get the same result here. Or actually, we don't why is that? Uh, yeah, because I have to know what's the problem here. We heapify, we copy the data, we heap up the data. And the problem is, I think that we don't 
Let me just look this up real quick. All right, so I think the issue here is that both of these are actually valid heaps. They're just different. So you get a different one when you do heap pop and when you pop and then do heapify, but both are valid heaps. The only thing you need to understand is that when you do heap pop, you get a valid heap and you don't get the same thing that you get when doing pop because pop just takes the first element and leaves everything the way it is. And heap pop actually cares about uh, maintaining the heap invariant. So actually having a valid heap. So this property that each node is uh, having only childs that are larger or greater. Um, so let's delete that again. And we're going to talk about the next function here, which is heap push, adding a value to the heap. And for that, we're going to print the data after the heap pop. And then we're going to just say heap q dot heap push. And we're going to use data here. And we're going to enter a new value. Let's go with uh, something that will not just end up in the end. Let's go with a two print data because the problem is when you add something like I think uh, 19, for example, it should end up in uh, just as a last value. In this case, you can see that when you just append, if you would just append this value, it would just end up in the end. In this case, it did not end up in the end. It's somewhere here, one of these twos. Um, whereas if I go with 19, for example, I think 19 is a value that should work. It will just remain in the end. Why? Because this still satisfies the heap property. So this is still a heap, a valid heap. Uh, you don't need to move the 19, you can just append it and it still works. Whereas uh, with other values, that's not the case. So we can play around a little bit, maybe with a four. We get something else. No, a four is still fine, I think, because let's think about this. We have one, we have two, 17, we have uh, two, three, we have 65, 43, and then we have uh, 44 and uh, 10. And then we have 20 and four, which is fine. So you have to take something in this case, which is less than three, otherwise it will just remain in the end. But the important thing is that heap push essentially pushes a new value and then gets it into a position where, uh, where it belongs. So I think if we do it one more time, if I go ahead and say, um, 19 and maybe 21 here. Those should not be in the end. Okay, 21 is in the end, but 19 was placed in a different place because uh, the three was already having two child. So we now had more room, more flexibility there. Uh, so this is the heap push function. Now, one thing that you may be asking right now is this is all a min heap, how do I turn this into a max heap? And for that, there is a kind of hacky way and there is a way that um, is undocumented. So both of them are not necessarily the best ways. Probably you should implement your own data structure if you want to have a max heap because heap queue offers a min heap. Uh, however, what you can do, this is probably the, the easy way you can just invert, uh, you can just invert the numbers. So everything that is a 10 becomes a negative 10. Everything that's a 20 becomes a negative 20 and so on and so forth. So you don't have to use these values, you can just negate them because then uh, one becomes negative one and uh, 65 becomes negative 65. So now it's less than negative one. So everything is inverted. This is one way to turn this into a min heap. Uh, so or a max heap actually, so I can say data equals negative x for x in data. And there you go. Now everything is reversed. If you want that. Um, however, you can also use some undocumented functions of heap q. So you can go ahead and say, uh, heap q dot and then underscore heapify underscore max <clears throat> data. And then you're going to see that this is now a max heap. However, you can see that PyCharm doesn't even recognize the function. It's, um, it says cannot find. Uh, it's undocumented and probably not something you should use. If you want to use a max heap, use your own implementation. <clears throat> um, and for the heap pop, you have the same thing. So we can say heap q dot underscore heap pop underscore max data, and then just print the result here. And this is still going to work. However, of course, um, yeah, this is undocumented. So best way implement your own data structure. Otherwise, you can negate the values. And this is what you can do if you if you want to do this. Now, one last thing that I want to show you here is maybe you want to merge some lists into a heap. So let's say we have here uh, L1. And we're going to just say this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 
50. And then L2 is something like 15, 25, 35, 45, 55. And now we can use heap Q dot merge. And we're going to merge L1, L2 and save the result in L3. And this is now going to be those two lists combined and also heapified. So now we have a heap. Actually, we need to turn this into a list because it's a generator. Uh, but as you can see now, this is a heap with all these values. So that's it. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.